Bonjour! Bonsoir! Dear friends, today a very famous man. From one oh. coast to the other. A true pioneer. A man who finally understood the true meaning of life. After 16 years working aggressively in the water business. Moving to Calistoga where water was to be found in the 1800s. He decided to move in the wine world in a way to welcome this amazing city of Calistoga into the paramount best wine destination on the planet. His name is Chris Canning. Dear friends, you're meeting the mayor, the leader, the entrepreneur of California. I'm delighted for us to have Chris Canning on the show because we're going to talk about his amazing life, why water to wine is like God, he could convert it all, and what is the future of this amazing valley and Calistoga that is taken to the next level. So to welcome him, 1881, he's a man of history, slowly but gently. Look at that, Chris. Oh. <laughs> well done. And can you imagine? This has been done this way since the 17th century. So there's a lot in common. Very much so. Thank you for having me. I appreciate being here. Well, Chris, what convinced you oh, to want to fantastic. be closer to grapes rather than water? Mm. Well, originally, I was, um, it was, the decision was made by someone else when I was working for Nestle. I was based uh, in Paris with them. And they said, we're going to move you out to a beautiful location called Calistoga which I said, I have no idea where that is. I was told it's just outside of San Francisco. You can live in the city and commute. Ah. That didn't happen. And uh, you were raised in Connecticut. I was raised in a small um, town in Connecticut called Beacon Falls, about 4,000 people, 6,000 dairy cow. Um, <laughs> our benchmark was our closest McDonald's was 40 minutes away. So we knew we were way out into the, uh, the hinterlands. Um, so more yeah. cows than people. More cows than people. Quite similar yeah. to Calistoga. <laughs> <laughs> in many cases, yeah. Uh, Calistoga is actually smaller than my town is now, uh, where I grew up, but uh, it's a pretty amazing place to have been, been from. I uh, enjoyed living there, growing up there, but the weather there isn't fantastic, as it is in Calistoga. So you moved to Calistoga, moved by a major multinational, Nestle. Correct. And uh, so you run, basically, the operation of the water business in Calistoga. Correct. I was doing international customer development in Asia and Europe. And they asked me to do a special project, which was Calistoga, uh, which the company had owned about 20 years at that point and was ready to try something different. And that's what they brought me here to do. Well, we're talking about 1881 here, mm -hmm. as we having one of our sparkling from 1881, you know, the key history of Napa Valley in many ways. And you are from Calistoga. So what happened in the 1860s and 70s that brought water to the limelight? <laughs> So uh, in the late 1800s, a gentleman by the name of Sam Brennan happened upon Calistoga, uh, heard about uh, these healing waters that the native Wapo tribe had come across um, and decided to test them out, found them to be remarkable and figured it would be a great place to welcome people, primarily from the, the San Francisco Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And from there, he started acquiring land and building facilities and out of that came Calistoga. Um, and how did the name Calistoga really <laughs> got created? So folklore because... has it that um, Mr. Brandon was hosting a dinner. Um, he was a Mormon, um, which, you know, they're not drinkers, but he was at this dinner where he may have been served a little bit. And his intention, having had been, been to Saratoga, which is the hot springs of the east, his intention was to say that he would like to make this, that location, the hot springs of the West, and he wanted to say, I would like to make this the Saratoga of California. Instead, he said, I would like to make this the Calistoga of Sarafornia. <laughs> and it stuck. So we are actually the, oh, we believe to be the only municipality, city, town, county, anywhere in the United States whose name means absolutely nothing. It's not tied to a native tribe, a family, a landmark. Um, or anything of that nature, and that's we take great pride in that. Well, but that makes you so unique. Again. Very unique, absolutely. So water was really phenomenal, and not only water, but as well for your skins. I mean, all 
give us a, a perspective. We have friends from all over the world. They'd love to know because they want to come, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Uh, so other than the health benefits, benefits of consuming yes. water, which you need, uh, it was very much believed that the waters, the geothermal water source that Calistoga sits on uh, has healing properties, uh, very unique mineral composites and bases to them. And they come out of the ground at about 200 degrees. Um, so it is a uh, Celsius very high. Celsius Fahrenheit. Uh, <laughs> Fahrenheit. Thank <laughs> God. I can't do the conversion. You can take care of that. Um, and because of the uniqueness yes. of that mineral uh, composite and components, that's what gives uh, it the healing properties uh, that it's been known for, again, back to the, the native peoples, the I mean, Wapo tribe. One of the most unique places in the whole United States, when you think of I it. would argue one of the most unique places on the planet. Ooh la I la. Are you the mayor by any chance? Uh, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> so we got to go back to that. But um, So you moved to Calistoga. Let's go back to your personal story because it's quite amazing. Your friend's big success in a major corporation, one of the most successful on the planet, started in Vevey, beautiful Switzerland, and became the leader of so many consumer products, chocolate, and of course, water, and many others. Absolutely. So you're part of that group, you come here, and, and how is your life transformed? So when I was first moved here, I was to be here for a three-year assignment, to yes. be the director of that company and kind of rebrand, reposition the company. Um, and three years in, we had made a decision to no longer foster that brand. Um, by that point, I'd already fallen in love with Calistoga. Um, the people, the climate, the location, the natural beauty. Yes. Um, and I'd been fortunate in my life to have been similar to yourself, have lived around the world, experienced other cultures and other places. So I had a very good benchmark about what a good lifestyle is. Yes. Um, and I would challenge anyone anywhere to find a better lifestyle than what we have in Calistoga. So Tell us, I'm going to toast to that, dear friends. This is Napa Valley. This is the last phenomenal village or town, as you love to say, at the end of Highway 29 and or Silverado Trail, at the feet of the famous Mount Santa Helena. So, so what is a good lifestyle? Um, the good lifestyle, a good lifestyle, and certainly what we experience in Calistoga is, is being surrounded by natural beauty. Mm -hmm. um, we have that. We have the, the joining of the Maya Camas and the Palisades Mountains, creating the narrowest part of the Napa Valley. So we're nestled at the crown of the yes. Napa Valley. I like, to, I like to call ourselves the crown of the Napa Valley. Um, there's great hiking trails and biking trails. Um, the people, um, just very approachable, laid back. They're, they're working folks. Yes. Um, you're going to be walking in downtown Calistoga, and you're going to meet the people who live in, the town, raise their children there, work in the vineyards, work in hospitality, own their own businesses. It's very authentic. That's right. Um, and one of the things we hear most about people who visit is our laid back attitude and the authenticity of the fact that people live and work. It's a bre living, breathing community. Uh, and for me, it was just the welcomeness and openness of the people, um, the attitude. Um, you can't beat the food and the wine. Um, and the fact that, you know, we sit on this geothermal water source that depending on how spiritual you are, um, it, it has this sense of, of kind of decompression. People yes. come into Calisto and they feel released. They feel comfortable right away. And, and the native people will tell you it's, you know, the energy that's exerted from the geothermal well that we are a source that we all sit on. So as now the leader of the town, what do you want people to say? as they come to Calistoga and they travel back to Connecticut, to Florida, to Texas, to all the places around the world that we all love to go. What I want them to say is what they've been saying when they come to visit us for years is, it is an authentic, approachable, relaxed, welcoming community. Um, it's somewhere you can come from anywhere on the planet, no matter what's going on in your life, you come here and you relax. Huh. And whether you're into wine, which you all should be, or food, or outdoor activity, or just the healing property of spa and resort, um, it's, it's the place to be. And, and for me, you know, I, I've been fortunate to have been the mayor there for nine years now. Um, it is, I'm a little biased, it's an absolutely amazing community. So how do you become a mayor <laughs> of a town? <laughs> you get more votes than the other person. <laughs> um, well, <I> was, <laughs> how do they vote? Is it a mail-in rebate? Uh, not that time around. No, I was actually, because I was running a business there for Nestle, yes. and then I uh, evolved into, after I retired from there, um, 
running the Chamber of Commerce. There were situations that I thought could have run differently or better, and I would complain about that to my father, who was still living on the East Coast at the time. And his comment to me was, shut up or put up. So out of spite for my father, um, I ran for city council, um, got elected, and then two years into that, I thought that things could be done differently by our mayor at the time. And when the opportunity came up, I ran for mayor, and now I'm in my fifth term. That's amazing. So how do you transform, which is, dear friends, for all of you not in the U.S., an important question, because America moves forward. And luckily gives chances to ideas, as we all know. You know, you have this executional power that is really phenomenal and very commanding in the United States that you can actually do things. <laughs> and I know a lot of you watching may say, oh, this would be great that we could do that where we live. And here we can. So give us a sense of where you started and where we are today. As I'm serving him, the founders, because he's one of the founders of the transformation of Calistoga. And this is all based from 19th century with a big component of the wine in this wine coming from Calistoga. Ah, in that case, thank you very much. There were many components that were already existing in Calistoga. And again, having been a, a resort destination and a desired place to be since the late 1800s, um, over the decades, they kind of faded and people didn't celebrate them enough. Yeah. Um, and what I found when I was there coming from the outside was what a remarkable place that some people locally, I think, could often take for granted. Um, so a matter of looking at we what was there already and then encouraging people and bringing, because you can't do this alone, you have to have a group of enthusiastic That's excited it. people facing in the same direction. Uh, not always easy. Um, and it was just a matter of time and working with that and taking everyone's skills and, and attributes and pulling them together. And, and, and once people started to see that, hey, this could be something that can work and it's you know a big benefit for us, um, for the community, um, we got them moving along. Not everybody was excited about it at, yes. at the beginning. Uh, even today, there's some that aren't. But at the end of the day, uh, we have evolved um, in a controlled and responsible manner while still maintaining what we're known for most, which is our downtown and small town character and charm. Would um, you say you're one of the most trendy city right now <laughs> in Napa Valley? I, well, by far, we're the best city in the Napa Valley. Um, sorry, guys, down south. Um, I don't know that you'd call us trendy as more of progressive, evolving. Uh, trendy scares some people. Um, but we have watched and been a part of and, and all participated in the celebration of what Calistoga already had to offer. Yes. And what we're doing now is we're just reestablishing ourselves as a premier destination, um, which we you know, were decades past and we're coming back around to that and doing it while maintaining our character That's and, what and I love. celebrating that. So to the character of Calistoga with Calistoga, wine in this amazing blend it's already fantastic i can tell well we gotta we gotta hear from you because the mayor mm. has been a very very hedonist and luckily he's moved not away from water because as you said we need it mm -hmm. but has added wine to his repertoire so tell us what do you think about this wine i think this is fantastic and first you know man cannot live on water alone so you must have wine. That's right. Um, this is outstanding. I can smell the beauty of Calistoga in this glass and the hardworking people of Calistoga. Ooh, <laughs> emotional. I like that. Always bring it back to the community. Congratulations. Um, that's fantastic. Beautiful. Um, thank you for that. Thank mm. you for making Calistoga uh, part of your efforts and endeavors uh, Always. in wine and, and in stepping forward, which I'm sure we'll talk about shortly. <laughs> um, well, very stepping, excited about it. Thank you. Stepping forward, uh, Chris, uh, you've had not easy terms, obviously, from economic recessions to some mild earthquake to some fires to some, you know, floods to you've lived it all. <laughs> I mean, frankly, it's been an adventurous nine years. Um, Wildfires, evacuations, pandemic, economic recession, um, labor challenges, not enough labor. Um, but, you know, through it all, it's been 
a coming together of the community. And one, what Calistogans do best is come together in times of adversity. Uh, and we've managed to come through it and nobody can ever count us out. And we just look for the next day and work toward the next day and the next adventure. Um, it's been exhausting, I will say that. <laughs> None of this was in the fine print of my contract to be the mayor. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, but it makes you stronger, and you know. So, are you going for country. governor next? No, or, no, no, no. Or president of the United States? Maybe. Why would I want to leave Calistoga? It's perfect the way it is. It it, it is perfect. Yeah. So, why do you feel, as coming from the East Coast mm -hmm. and lived in Paris and see the world all around the world, to really focus as well on history, yeah. and Focus as well on where we come from, because I think you do an amazing job at preservation, at restoration of buildings, at keeping that amazing West pioneering town of California. So I grew up in New England and I have a father who's a history buff mm -hmm. and very much made it an important part of uh, my brother and I's growing up. Um, so appreciating and understanding that coming to California. Uh, it's a little bit younger in some yes. cases than from where I came from in New England. Um, we are very fortunate in Calistoga because of the fact that we are one of the earliest towns to be incorporated in the state of California. Uh, the history and the conditions under which we are incorporated. Um, it's, it's an amazing place and, and any opportunity we have to preserve that history, yes. um, to celebrate that history, to learn from that history, um, has to be respected and has to be championed. Um, and, and we're very excited anytime we have the opportunity to do that and continue in that process. Um, we're very fortunate, in my opinion, very much so, that we're, we have someone such as yourself who has you. that shared appreciation and understanding for history. For sure. um, and especially the structures of history, um, uh, the edifices and what you've done in other communities throughout California and even closer to home um, to celebrate that. So. You know, what you're going to be doing and are doing currently at the depot, one of the most historied properties. Did I sneak out too soon? No! <laughs> the news is out! Certainly one of the most historic properties and historied properties in the city of California. Yeah, and in Napa Valley. Uh, and absolutely. Um, we are very, very excited. It's in the right hands by someone who will honor and celebrate and treat it the way it needs to be treated. Thank you and so I much. I appreciate that. Well, well, and dear friends, you all need to have the record straight. We came. To Kelly Stuga, thanks to Chris. And this is, you know, the, the fabulous way of America. Many of you have not experienced America the way we have as far as investing and working with the community and certainly the authorities of the community. And whether it was Yonville with John Dunbar, great mayor as well here in town, and Chris Scanning, they really encourage us to come. So it's not just a mayor, it's someone who pushes you to come and invest in those towns and make a difference and really attempt to really create energy in those towns so the towns will never be the same and will have that amazing crystallization of vibration that makes it a great town. So I really want to thank you for that, Chris, because wh why did you want us to come, really? Well, you and I have, uh, have known each other quite some time and for I've sure. seen some of the work you've done in other communities. Um, and I just knew that Calistoga was the right place and understanding yes. your appreciation for history and historical characters. And you're not going to find someone more of a character in history in California than Sam Brandon himself. For sure. Um, I felt strongly for quite some time that Calistoga is the right place for a JCB project. And I'll tell you, my, my excitement aside, our city team and staff's excitement aside, our community has, uh, is embracing this. And wow. there's a great deal of enthusiasm and excitement um, to see life come back into the depot, um, into that whole corner of town. Uh, people are very excited, very enthusiastic, uh, and very much looking forward to it. In, in the approach you've already had about the history of it and respecting that um, and engaging the community um, has gone a long way. Well, and it's been you. my experience with you in other projects I've watched you uh, endeavor upon. Well, and we thrill because, you know, as you come from obviously the oldest part of the United States and close to Boston, when we talk about the famous rock, we do. And even Carmel, which we talk about the famous, the missions, the missions. Yeah. Uh, I was just there a week ago, having an amazing time in the famous Basilique, as we call it. And, and, uh, 
uh, Juniper Serra and, and looking at the first, you know, beautiful piece of wood, in fact, that trunk, that is the Plymouth Rock version <laughs> of California. It's, it's great to see that and you're continuing to pioneer. What, what do you think makes this American spirit so unique? As you've traveled all around the globe and you've worked yourself with people from Asia to Africa to Europe, what makes America such that phenomenal, energistic place? We don't take no for an answer. Yes. Um, we take everything's a challenge, everything's an opportunity. Um, we don't have as much history as other mm -hmm. parts of the world, so maybe we don't know better as to when we should stop something. Yes. Um, but we're adventurers, we're willing to try anything and everything, um, some good, some bad, but at the end of the day, it's that spirit, um, that attitude that keeps propelling us forward and, and not just propelling ourselves, mm -hmm. but bringing others with as well. That's right. Um, we are, in any part of the world I've been in, it's not, you know, people ask you, oh, what's your favorite or what's better or worse? Nothing's better or worse. Everything's just different. Mm -hmm. And you can learn from every culture and every experience. And I have certainly from every person to every country I've been in. Um, and we have that to offer. We also have that to learn. Um, but we also create, in, in, in certainly in America, we have, we're presented with opportunities and encouraged to do what's right and do, do things a little bit differently. Um, while we want to complain sometimes about the bureaucracy we may have here, I've experienced bureaucracy elsewhere and we've got a pretty easy game so far. <laughs> I, would, I would toast to that. Not, no, not naming any culture in particular. <laughs> now, what, what inspires you yourself? And then we can lead into why did you want to serve so much your community? So two different questions. So I was raised in a family where if you, of those who have much, much is expected. And, you know, we're fortunate. Um, we grew up in a very middle to lower middle class family, but had everything we would want for. Um, and both of my parents encouraged my brother and I, if you have a skill set or the opportunity or ability to give back, that's what you do. Um, what motivates me is making things better for others. Yeah. And you know, rising tide. If I do that, then it makes it better for me and those around me. Um, and also, just come with an came with an attitude and raised with an attitude of you know, can do and don't take no for an answer. Yeah. Um, and that really drove me. You know, I I mentioned the fact, and it is a true story that I was complaining about how things were happening or not happening when I was first in Calistoga, uh, and saying, okay, you know, sitting on the side and complaining does no good unless you're willing to participate. Uh, and I also grew up in a household where you weren't allowed to say no or veto anything unless you were willing to come up with an alternate idea or I be love part that. of a solution. Uh, I love that. that. And that's so critical, you know, encouraging the debate. So how Absolutely. do you encourage the discussion, the conversation, the debates around you? Because, dear friends, we need to learn from Chris. I've seen him in city council. I've seen him with his spears, I've seen him leading all of us as part of his community. And he has that skill set that encourages conversation. Give us your, your, um, your key to success in that. First and foremost is you have to have a good team. Uh, and I've been very fortunate throughout my career, both in the private sector and the public sector, to have been surrounded with, with good people. Um, whether you enjoyed Ronald Reagan or not, when he was our president, one of the, 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 the phrases I take from him is, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I will surround myself with smart people. Yeah. And I've been fortunate to be able to do that and be a part of that throughout my life. Um, and the way to impact change is you have to have people who are getting aligned, taking input from all others. And then it's really just positive energy, march forward. Yes, you're going to bump into obstacles, um, but no obstacle is insurmountable. Yes. Um, short of death, and we haven't experienced that yet, so we just keep going. Yeah. Um, and it's just encouraging people that this can be done. And what starts to happen is you, have, you get little successes, yes. and little successes create energy, and that energy leads people to be motivated even more so, and then you have bigger successes, et cetera. And one of the things that... You know, I felt when I first came to Calistoga was there was kind of this, oh, well, we're just this little town up in Napa Valley. Yeah. And here we have Napa and Yountville and St. Helena. Um, at some point, it's just encouraging people to say, you know, we're Calistoga. That is something extremely proud uh, that we should all carry. And that energy has created to the point where we have other 
communities within the Valley who are now looking up to us That's right. on what we've been able to do and, and do it responsibly. You're an adventurer too. Uh, you've done travels all over the planet. Maybe give us a few examples of those and how they've shaped who you are today. So I've been, again, fortunate to have had experiences. Yeah. Um, I've been to some more exotic places and done some more exotic things than I may have wanted to at the time. Uh, but I've climbed Mount Rainier, um, summited that. That was interesting. Uh, I've been able to uh, summit Kilimanjaro in Africa. That was an adventure more than I bargained for. Wow, uh, that's an amazing one. That was a quick story. And that I got engaged in that because while a year prior to making the summit was in a bar with some friends and when you're having a few drinks, <laughs> some fine wine perhaps, somebody throws out the idea, sure, let's do that. A year later, I was the only one of two people who were actually showed up on the doorstep to do it. But, uh, <laughs> be careful what you say yes to when you're drinking. Uh, sorry, consuming or enjoying. Well, the drinking was <laughs> orientated because of the altitude. As, too. Absolutely. Uh, I've done that. And then I've done a lot of uh, adventure races, the Beta Breakers, the Ragnar Relays, which is a, a road running race from San Francisco to Calistoga. Wow. Um, so Biking or? A running. Team of 12 and you kind of rotate through. Um, but anything, I, I, there's very little I'll shy away from. I jumped out of planes before. Mm. Um, it's hot, with yeah, or without a parachute? Uh, well, I didn't have the parachute, but the guy strapped to me had the parachute. So it all worked okay. out. So I could say I jumped out without one on, my, on myself. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, we were also, you know, the house I, again, the family I grew up in, very fortunate. It was just a sense of adventure. Go at it. Yeah. You get one time at this, one go round in the world. Um, have at it. That's right. And bring others with you when you can. So now what's your dream? I'm living my dream. I live in Calistoga. <laughs> I'm sitting here having wine and bubbles with Jean Charles. I mean, what gets better than that? There's a pool next to us. We'll probably go swimming soon. <laughs> well, of course. And you belong to some great clubs in Calistoga. Why well, see our mayor tan. Get his buddy caramel of the beautiful sun <laughs> and having a In few... between working hard. Of course. No, well, a town never gets to what it is without a great leader and without a mayor who and his team to work hard. Because I think a great team. Often people think things happen, but it's great to be shown the way, but along the way you gotta work hard at it. Don't you, you think? You have to help people move along and change happens in two ways. It's education and or attrition. That's right. <laughs> so, Mayor, we would be very honored. You're very wise. You have, you're full of wisdom and excess, which I love. That's why we love our Mayor, Chris. Um, maybe a big message to the world from Chris Canning. To the world from Calistoga, you are always welcome. It is the center of hospitality, the center of health and well-being, and soon to be the new home to a JCB project, which we're very excited about having. The Calistoga Depot, dear friends. <laughs> we got to thank the Merchant family, great friends who sold us this beautiful, iconic, historical landmark. And for us to be able to, to do it, and to Chris, who showed the way. We toured the town. We saw everything which was potentially for rent. And when you want to rent, maybe you want to buy. Who knows? To the future. Cheers. Thank you very Cheers. much. Cheers.